All right, Brett Sussman, Vice President, Business Blueprints and Banking at American Express. It's wonderful to have you on the program today. Super excited to be talking about small business owners today. I'm absolutely looking forward to it too. So I think in concept, what I'd love to go over with you, I'd love to hear your pearls of wisdom, uh, is really around small business growth, small business growth, and uh, why some cash flow issues continue to challenge some of the, the segment, the small and medium sized businesses. Um, so does that make sense? Sounds good? sounds good. Yeah, that sounds great. So, I mean, you know, let me start with I think you can't talk about small business formation without talking about the pandemic. Right. And and I would argue the pandemic was really the mother of reinvention for a lot of people and a lot of small business owners. And what we saw from the Chamber of Commerce data is 10.5 million small businesses were formed in 21 and 22, which far outpaced what was happening previously. And I think there were a lot of reasons for that. People had a time to reflect and pause and say, I wanna pursue maybe my passion. And so, you know, I think the vitality of small businesses, they continue to be the heartbeat of this country is incredibly important. And I would argue it has actually never been easier to start a small business, but it's never been harder to maintain a small business right now. Well said, well said. That makes a lot of sense too. So maybe taking a step back, if I may, um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your background. What led you into the role that you're serving right now? Sure. So, you know, currently I am in business blueprint and banking, which is the small business banking division of American Express. Um, and I've had the pleasure of, of working here for 21 years at American Express and spent the last 13 years specifically in the small business space. I come from a family of entrepreneurs, my two grandparents, uncles, aunts, father, sister. I joke, if I'm not helping small business owners, I didn't get, go, get to go home for Thanksgiving. And I love <laughs> that Thanksgiving turkey, Joe. So I really want to go home. <laughs> right there with you. <laughs> Makes sense. So, you know, I, I, and I, I think when, you know, I, I talk to my family and I talk to small business owners, you know, what what's happening right now is, you know, we're seeing in the data about half of small business owners are confident in the financial decisions that they're making. And that means another half are not feeling as confident, you know, as, as they should be these days. And, and when you actually look at that by size of businesses, larger small businesses have more confidence, but those smallest to smallest small businesses are not feeling that. And really what's driving that, I think, is, is twofold. One is they're very concerned about inflation. Right. And, and, and inflation continue, continues to be a persistent problem. And most small business owners view this going through 2024. And how they have reacted to inflation is thinking about price increases. And I think we've all seen that in our lives, you know, going in your local community and looking at the price of food and things like that and saying, wow, this is a lot higher than maybe I remembered. And what they are grappling with right now is how much can they increase price, can they increase price anymore without losing customers maybe to a big box business, you know, who has some more price efficiency. So that's really, you know, they're really grappling with that issue. I think the second issue that they're grappling with is I was so excited to talk to you about the new business formation, but it also means competition is incredibly intense, right? And so the number of new businesses out there make it, why am I differentiated from some other business out there? And how am I gonna get the attention of consumers using email or social media or any of those platforms they're using to marketing is really hard for them. And so, you know, those are some of, you know, very innate challenges that small business owners are feeling right now. So how does Business Blueprint actually provide a service for the customers? What are they thinking about? What are they looking at? What do they, what do they need out of the service? Sure. So, so we, we launched Business Blueprint in uh, Q1 of this year. And really what it is, it is a free cash flow management suite for small business owners. And it really, it has a few products that help small business owners. It has a high yield business checking account. So that is a no fee monthly for, for businesses. You earn 130 basis points on your money and very easy to open digitally. We have a line of credit 
from American Express up to $250,000. You don't pay unless you take down any of any of that money and that's an all digital experience. So we really have a, a plethora of tools that you both can visualize how your cash flow is doing. And then there's tools there from American Express or you can even view tools from other providers so you get a full flow, you know, full information on what's happening with your business. And we really think that is what businesses are, are craving because they're telling us they're turning down opportunities, Joe, that the 40% of them said, I've turned down a business opportunity because I don't know if I can afford it. And it's usually because an opportunity comes and you have to put out money up front, right? And you either don't have the cash for that or you don't have the access to the liquidity. And so we want to give you confidence again, that you can make some of those better decisions um, and grow your business. So that really is the ethos of what Business Blueprint is. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, I've started a small business a long time ago and saw some of the trials and tribulations that you're sort of discussing right now. One of the things I'm curious about with regard to the product itself, um, the business blueprint, is in the future, do you ever see it acting, or maybe it's like this now, do you ever see it acting as sort of a hub tying together other pieces, maybe like a plug into marketing or sales interface, or even once business has been conducted with your customers, you want to get more information from them. Are you happy with this? So satisfaction surveys in the future, could that ever be tied into something like this? Yeah, I think from from where we are from a starting point really was the need that small business owners say to us, which is I have seven or eight apps running in my back office, right? I have a payroll provider, I have a credit card provider, I have a bank, maybe I have to pay some cross-border payments and they don't work together and they're not interoperable. And so we're really trying to bring that visibility together for the small business owner. And again, this is not for the small business owner's accountant, right? They say, you know, I want to see some of this. And a lot of these small business owners, hey, they didn't get into small business because they love doing their books, right? They're passionate about baking or helping people or very creative, right? And so we're really trying to, to elevate with visualization and interconnectivity with tools that they can see trends at a high level. And it really hopefully develops a conversation. And so, you know, one of the things that, that we have is like, we have a view of their expenses, right? And we're gonna aggregate your expenses across what you spend on your debit card, what you spend on an American Express card. If you have another card, you can link that data. So I can give you a full picture of these are actually all your expenses. And what, you know, we've heard small business owners say to us is like, I didn't realize I was spending that much on travel, right? And then I talked to my head of sales and I said, like, I'm not seeing the new business. Like, why are we spending so much on travel? And it, it, it evokes a conversation. Do you know what I mean? That's very important to the future of that business versus just numbers, right? And so that's really what we hope. This is a conversation piece. That's a daily part of their digital lives. I, I will joke to my team, after a small business owner goes to their favorite social media account, I want them to go to Business Blueprint when they wake up in the morning because it'll be that integral to running their business. It's amazing. No, it makes a lot of sense too. Uh, so what do you think are maybe one or two of the biggest challenges that these business leaders have for, these small, for their small enterprises? Yeah. So... One of the things that, that remains a challenge is hiring uh, for small business owners. And, you know, there, there's a large percentage of them are still looking to hire the right roles and they're, and they're not finding, you know, the right people or the right skill set out there. So the existing employee base feels very overburdened, right? And so there's a lot of conversations about compensation and how do I retain who I have and how do I hire um, so that is, you know, one of the big challenges out there. I think the second one, which is really interesting and on a lot of small business owners' minds is new technology and how do I use new technology? And, and one of the ones we really dug into in our financial confidence report is generative AI, right? And everyone is talking about it these days. And I would say I even had the bias to say, I think of that as a large company thing, right? Like large companies are going to think about it. But we were in, in incredibly impressed with how many small business owners over 40% are using or testing into AI in some form. 
And I would say really the use cases for them is um, to save time and, and be more efficient. So it's things like servicing, right? I'm going to get an email from a customer. Maybe I can have some, some, some AI generated responses, right? Or for a marketing context, like let's test a few subject lines. Let's, let's write a few different email copies, right? And I think it links back to they're finding it's still so hard to hire. Is generative AI a little bit of a panacea to make their existing employees more efficient that maybe they don't have to hire as much? Um, so I think that has been a really interesting, um, you know, sort of change my mindset of, you know, that those tools aren't just for big business owners, they're for small business owners too. And they actually may need it even more because of some of the constraints that they deal in. In the short term, where do you see uh, the economy going? Uh, where, does, where does American Express see the economy going? Are, are, is there real concern that it might be a recession in the next year? It feels like it was originally discussed that it was going to be this year, but that's really been pushed out much further than, than we thought. You mentioned it, unemployment is extraordinarily low. Uh, inflation, while it was high, has come down significantly to 3.7 to 3.6 at this stage. Um, where do you feel like things sit right now? Yeah, you know, I, I don't feel like I can really prognosticate on, on on where it's where it's going. But what I will say is, I think small business owners feel the uncertainty, right? And that's that's usually not good for small business owners. And you know, wh why the uncertainty is bad is, do I invest in you know some new equipment or some new growth opportunity? And you don't want to invest in the wrong time, right? And so. That I think is really the the volatility of the environment continues to persist from my perspective. And that is why I think small businesses are seeking more cash flow tools, more visibility tools, because in times of uncertainty, you know, you're hoping for a little bit of an edge these days. <laughs> no, that's a great point. And I appreciate your perspective there. So what are the biggest challenges when it comes to cash flow for smaller businesses? When I think about like having enough money uh, accessible to me when I need to launch something or build something or buy something, I have to do a sort of a cost benefit analysis, right? So how, how do you help people make these decisions? I mean, how does that cash flow component baked into this? Yeah. So we really think about three components, right? And, and this is how small business owners, they think about their first is their cash position. Right. And so, you know, they want full visibility into their cash. And that's also that's why we've launched a, a digital business checking account. And also, hey, I want to help you make that money work hard for you. That's why it is it is quite a, a high yield uh, business checking account. So you need to start with your cash position. And then it always is what's the money coming into my business and what's the money coming out of my business. And that is not always easy. Right. And so, it, you know, they're looking at sort of their payment processors to understand that of what's the money coming in. And then they're looking at their expenses, which could be on card, check, et cetera, coming out. And so we really are trying to to visualize both of those pieces for them, you know, sort of the revenue, the expense side and make sure it's coming from all data sources. Um, and then it's real time for them versus like that lag, because someone calls you up. Um, with an opportunity, if you're a, you know, a retail, a, a fashion designer, Nordstrom calls you up and it says, you know, I want to buy this many dresses. And you're like, that's $100,000 of inventory right now. Do I have 100000 Right. And so that's why I think the other piece of this platform that we're incredibly excited about is a line of credit product. Right. And this is a line of credit product that you can take six, 12 or 18 month loans, depending on what you need from a flexibility perspective, because that Nordstrom opportunity may come up and you may not have the cash, but you could say, I can get a low priced loan and it's available now. And then I'll be paid three months later, six months later. Right. And, and, and not everyone I think has those tools of those two on, on their, at their fingertips. Right. You know, they're doing that maybe in Excel, maybe on a notepad, right? And so we really want to give them sort of, I would say, like industrial size, larger business type tools to run that business. Fantastic. So thinking a little bit more about money and 
the current iterations of what we have, and then maybe just speculating a little bit in the future um, and your thoughts about this. So one major development that came out, oh, I'd say maybe a month and a half ago or whatever the case is, was Fed now, right? So the immediate settlement layer of money. Um, so two part, one, I'm curious to see if this has any play or do you think people are excited about this because now you can transfer money. There's no uh, three day, seven day period of, of waiting, whatever the case is. And then I'll get down the road of even something a little bit more futuristic. But what are your thoughts on that? Do you think people really care about this Fed now as a, yeah. as a possible solution? Yeah, I mean, I, I think of the Fed now as a representation of, you know, instant money, right? You know, I want to I want to get paid instantly, right? And and I think for for small business owners, actually, those days they have to wait, you know, for the check to clear, for the check to settle are very nerve wracking and anxiety inducing. And so I actually feel like solutions like that are, are instant ACH, which you see rolling out in the industry a little bit more is particularly important to the small business owner segment because that can mean the difference. You know, as I said, I have a family of small business owners and they, it's the first thing they taught me is cash is king. Right. And I think this really speaks to that cash is king sentiment. So I um, do think, particularly in the small business owner space, this is going to be incredibly well received. That's funny. My father used to always talk about that as well. Cash is king. <laughs> so speaking of cash, let's transition to one of the last things I'd love to ask you about just to get your thoughts. And uh, if you don't want to talk about it, it's no problem at all. But I'm just kind of curious. The future of cash is potentially CBDC, so central bank digital currencies or stable coins, right? This concept that you could have a, and it's almost a, a four letter word in some, some words, <laughs> cryptocurrency, but a, a stable coin that's backed by either a government, a stable government around the world, and most of them are working on this right now to test, or a, a private industry, right, deciding to come out with its own, PayPal did this recently, its own cryptocurrency that's a stable coin. So people can exchange this all over the world with ease. What are your thoughts about that in this sector, in this in this area? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I would say what I look back to what to what old is new, right? And I think, you know, of the, the transition we've seen over the years, from more paper-based or check-based to card, right? And, and you know, I, I think when I talk to our small business owners, how they really run and fund their whole business on their American Express cards, as an example, right? And, and that leads to much better reconciliation on the back end, the visibility that it comes with. And so I, I, I really do think there's probably a next iteration in what form that takes. I, 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 won't, I won't guess. Um, but I, I think like it does what I what I say is it, it really does have to come with for small business owners, visibility, reconciliation. And there's actually like a level of, of more detailed data they're often looking by. So if they're going to use one of these solutions to buy something from a supplier, we often say they want to know how many units did I buy? What was the cost per unit? Some of that. Right. And so I think that's an interesting piece of it is like the metadata that I think is really important for some of these transactions, particularly for small business owners as a segment. Wonderful. So last question, and then I'd love to turn it over to you if there's anything else you'd like to add, but you've done a great job in conceptualizing what a business blueprint does right now and how it can help those small to medium sized enterprises in their daily work and their understanding of what they have, what's coming in, you know, or maybe I need a little extra cash to, to buy whatever it is. All of that is the centerpiece for and a huge focus for them. If you were to break out the crystal ball and look into the future, two to three years, what, do you see changing or evolving to the point where people will start leveraging maybe a new tool that we haven't really thought about much um, or new components that might be built inside of the application? This I'm assuming is a SaaS-based application. Um, anything that we should be thinking about or looking towards in the future? Yeah, and you know, I, I think you even alluded to it, right? I would say like where we're starting with Business Blueprint is really sort of a back-end operating system for small business owners. And, and, and they're really craving that 
But I think where this eventually evolves to is an ecosystem that the front end and the back end, you know, are, are, are much more sort of interoperable in, in, in one place. So things like sort of your inventory management or your marketing or your CRM, and how does that all link together? And I think, you know, sort of with the, with the abundance of, of APIs, you know, it, it's, it's unclear who's going to lead that. But I think what, what it will look like is a little bit of a, a Jenga, you know, that the small business owners will take pieces from different sources and pieces from different institutions, and they maybe have their own sort of bespoke solution that's right for them, you know, but it'll be part of it, hopefully will be from American Express, and part of it will be somewhere there, and they have sort of that front and back dashboard. And I think, you know, large businesses, that's how they run their business. My hope is we can bring that type of tool, that type of flexibility to small businesses. As I said, you know, when I, when I think of that 50% or so that are confident, like we should all have it to say, how do we get that to 70, 80, 90% and bring them the right front end and back end tools there. I mean, that would be fantastic. The SMB American Express platform, business platform. Yeah, <laughs> something along those lines. Yeah, that would be fantastic. All right. Any last thoughts that you'd like to throw out there? No, I mean, I, I just like would always reiterate when, when I end, you know, how in incredibly important small business owners to the U.S. economy is. Um, I think a lot of folks live in communities where it is incredibly important to have a vital small business owner. So I always like to tell people, if you have a choice out there, please shop small. That money gets reinvested into your community. That money gets reinvested into small business owners. And they really are the heartbeat of this country. I couldn't agree more. I'm a big believer in it as well. So thank you so much, Brett, for all your time here and your thoughts and wisdom and all that fun stuff. It was great today. Thanks for having me today. Of course. Take care. Have Take a good care. one.